This is Adam from Edge. Today I'm back with the Exchange team, this time with Colin Mitchell. How are you doing, Colin? Hi, Adam. Good to see you. Tell me what you do. Yes, so my name is Colin Mitchell. I'm a TPM, Technical Product Manager on Exchange. Uh huh. Uh, focus on compliance and information protection and control. All right, sounds like some scary stuff. Tell me, <laughs> tell me why it's important. What are some of the things that go wrong with, with messaging and, and why we need some of these controls and compliance? Right, well in terms of information protection and control, that has a lot to do with data leakage. And I think we all have stories or have read stories in the newspaper uh, that have happened out there. The common one is uh, somebody will leave a laptop in a parking lot, all the data is uh, exposed or, 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 or gone. Uh, another one, you know, USBs, thumb drives are full of personal information, social security numbers, that kind of thing. You hear about these things all the time. Uh, two of my favorites, one that I just recently saw, it was about a month ago, and, and timely in this economy where an HR director had uh, put together this huge uh, framework for his managers on how to lay off employees. And he put it in the email, of course, put the attachment on there, and boom, out it went to the entire company. Oops. About a week before it was supposed to go out. Uh, accidents. And the other one, uh, it's a, a, another large company. This happened a couple of years ago where uh, it was a big lawsuit that had actually come up. And the internal counsel was going to uh, email his external counsel. And uh, he put in a couple of letters. It auto-completed. Unfortunately, it auto-completed to somebody else's name. And that person turns out to be a reporter for a, a big newspaper. So sure enough, the details of the entire settlement were leaked out over the newspaper. It appeared the next day, big disaster. So all these examples, actually, I've used are, are relevant to, to us in that um, information protection and control, yes, we often think of it as people stealing information uh, from, from the company. Mm -hmm. But more often than not, what happens is it's accidental. Uh, an employee doesn't understand certain policies. They, uh, you know, they, they click reply all to an, a mail, as I said earlier, something that the auto completes. But with email and, and the ability to send confidential information, that just sets you up for a, a lot of potential problems with uh, information protection and control. So we introduced uh, quite a few features in Exchange 2007, which helped to address this issue. Okay. And a lot of that is, is done through the transport role. And what that does is help, uh, help you set up rules. Administrators can set up rules where emails can be analyzed by keywords, senders, recipients. And uh, that will then allow them to block or redirect email based on, on what, is in, what is in that email. Now, one of the problems with that, it works, uh, it works wonderfully well in those scenarios I just mentioned, except that may not always be the best solution to outright block a mail. For example, that lawyer may have, we could have set up a rule that said all, all mail going to an external recipient or all mail with that particular case or the names that were relevant cases in, in that email. We want to block that. We want to reroute that. Okay. But what happens when that lawyer decides that he really does actually want to send something out, that he's doing it within policy? Then we have to make exceptions to that rule, which you can also do in transport. Uh, we looked at this and thought, you know what, we can get even better in this. We can become more granular, we can uh, create more rules that will allow more flexibility so that you can um, initiate controls on email without hampering productivity. And that's what we're going to show you today. Okay. Do you want to show us something now? Sure. Right. Okay. So here we are in, uh, we'll call this person Arlene, Arlene Huff. Um, She's somebody in an organization who has a particularly bad reputation for leaking information, whether it be accidentally or, or for whatever reason. So we've created a few rules in Exchange 2010 to help curb this problem. And what you're seeing here actually is uh, Outlook 2010. And uh, we're going to expose a couple of these, uh, these new Exchange features. So let's go ahead and uh, create, a, create a mail. And similar to that example I, I talked about earlier, we're going to actually we're going to we're going to put a header on this, and we're going to talk about a merger that's coming up. And she wants to send this out to somebody on the outside, and we're going to say it's official. Oops. Okay. And then we're going to send it to somebody externally who probably shouldn't know about this. Now. What you see there is the second I actually put that external address in, we've created something called a mail tip. And what that did is it fires off, in this case, external uh, recipients. And you can see the message here. This email uh, includes external recipients, such as Brian Johnson, who we're sending this to. This poses a, it's a great reminder. So it actually solves that initial problem. If somebody were, was to send a mail out accidentally to an external person they didn't intend to, mm -hmm. up pops this mail tip to just give them a, uh, you know, a quick reminder. And these mail tips, uh, there's a whole bunch of rules that you can initiate for these. For example, you could, uh, 
you could add uh, a distribution list, for example, and that person, Brian Johnson, ex could be an external recipient buried within that DL. Probably an even more common problem where you didn't even realize you were going to put that into external audience. This mail tip will uh, will actually pick that up. Um, it can also uh, it can also fire based on a whole bunch of other attributes related to the email. But the key thing here with mail tips is that it's simply alerting the user. It's not going to block them outright. Okay. So in this case, she's going to send this anyway. We'll fire that out. So this this mail's going anyway. She's had her fair warning, but she's going to send this out anyway. So we've anticipated that problem as well, and. Uh, up comes uh, another feature that we've introduced in Exchange 2010, and that is the ability to moderate mail. And in this case, we've created a transport rule that sends all mail coming from Arlene uh, that's going out to an external recipient. Well, once that happens, I'll log in here to her boss, Todd M, and all mail that she sends externally will actually be moderated and sent to her boss for uh, for review and either rejection or approval. Okay, so here we are in Todd Meadows mailbox. This is Arlene's boss, and uh, as I mentioned, we've created this rule that is sending all mail that she sent to an external recipient over to Todd for approval or rejection. And if we uh, here's the, here's the moderated mail notice right here. And this is pretty simple. This uh, this is a rule we've created in, in Transport. I'm going to show you that uh, wizard in a second. It can fire off of key, key attributes within the mail, in this case, for external recipients, and he has the ability to either re to re approve or reject this, uh, this mail. So he's going to go ahead and not only reject this mail, but also send her a, a reminder as to why he's, done, uh, he's, he's made this rejection. And again, pretty easy stuff here. We'll just say it's not public. And that will go straight over to Arlene to... Uh, not only uh, protect the company, but also uh, this is sort of an on-the-spot um, alert as to the policies that she may or may not have violated. So it's actually quite helpful on a lot of fronts. We'll send that off. Okay, so she's going to get an email now that says the mail you tried to send externally, she'll get that mail back from her boss that says this isn't official, so we didn't let this go through. Exactly. Okay. And, the, and there it is. And there it is. Okay. There's the, there's the uh, and with the, with the notice. So now she's, now sort of the, the, uh, the cycle's complete here. Okay. She's had two, uh, two kicks at the can. Um, so now, I guess she's decided at this point, yeah, she's probably not going to go ahead and send these details out. Uh, she's got another job to do relating to the merger, and that is some documents that her president had requested. So what we're going to do first is, uh, this is, I'll just put the merger title in here. I'm going to call these legal edits. I'm going to call these legal edits because what we're going to do is also attach this uh, mocked up document with all the so-called legal letters relating to the merger. And uh, keep these, keep these uh, letters in mind because what we're also going to show you is how we can actually search attachments, which really gives you a lot more granular control when you're creating these rules. Uh, before you would search the, the attachment type or the header, we're going to show you how we can actually uh, analyze, drill down into the actual um, uh, text of an office document or an office file and analyze that and apply rules based on, on things that are buried within a document. So in this case, keep your eye on project XYZ. So let's go back to that. We're going to attach that file to this document here. And we're going to send that off to somebody named Shane Kim, who we will say is the president of the company. Okay. And require and ma mail of this type going to Shane Kim. Uh, the idea here is that we want to make sure that all of this is IRM encrypted. And this is another big feature in our IPC story for Exchange 2010. Prior to this, IRM encryption was something, as we all know, that we could apply manually up here. But in this case, Arlene, our notorious information leaker, is going to forget to do this, as so many people do. So there are policies, but she's actually going to forget this. And there's a whole bunch of reasons why this kind of thing happens, but it happens a lot. We're going to... Uh, actually not click the IRM protection manually. And this is where our, our new rule will come in. A big, uh, a big new addition to Exchange 2010 is that we can now apply IRM protection automatically by transport. So uh, again, all the rules and the granularity that people know about with transport, you can apply here. So if there's a keyword, there's a particular sender, a recipient, a DL, uh, the contents of the mail, uh, anything in there will, will if, if uh, need be, fire off uh, your IRM protection. So 